Kaku mwe afio ai tolo kaha yo tua yo tau tolo tonga. Kaku mwe fuka o pili nia te otu tonga. Kaku mwe afio po ono o tai ne kui ni na na spao to wa. Mwe ho ei kyo fo nua. Kau fa malu malu atu ini tala. Kau mau mau. Fa kakak tua fa tongia. Kau na. Ifi mau tua tu ani. Kau ina aku. Ofa for nua. Tangan tadi mau fa fine itu nak kau tua be. Warm Pacific greetings to the finest of the finest who have come from all around the Pacific. For Miss Pacific Islands 2018, I feel it necessary to say Malo Alpito to the Governor of the National Reserve Bank of Tonga, though he's not here, just for the opportunity to be in this building and in this room as we begin the very first judge event for our pageant. This is a long-awaited morning, and it's a glorious morning. And before we actually begin with all of the Festivities of this day, I'd like to begin first by asking for an opening prayer so that we can start the way we, we always do with each of our events. And we invite board member from Samoa of the Miss Pacific Island Pageant Board, the Malulina Palamo, if she could please come forward and offer our opening prayer. Let's pray. 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 O nga mato, poto poto mai na i mato. Ma wos e tu fatasinga fi fi a tu nu tai to tasi o Pacifica. I mato si i tu mato li i fatai la o fio. Mato di talo to i la o fio na i fio mai la o mao fa i a. I tai to lu mai la o fa na i tai a. I fai o fio i la mato. Si i tu mato li i la o fio. I au ma lu na vai to fio i mato tai to tasi. I a i lo fa vai fa ma i a i te mato le ne iaso. Ya matang ng mato ng alway na niya tulong tama, yung ayo sa mai yee. Mawai na itay na tawa umot ang natulog na ito kasi na yee mawai na to, na mafalfanan pa ibayo lo ng mga pa yee ito. Yeta yee mua aw mo di aw lo fio yung mato ng alway na mato kaya na yee ni mata. So sa mai komite ng tama ay may say mato umot na ito kasi na tulong mas pico mo talo mato kung 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 to begin this event, we'd first like to call on the acting CEO of Tourism, who will give us the opening remarks and the welcoming remarks, and then we hope to introduce the judges, and uh, before the judges will be introduced, a member of the board, the uh, Director of the Visitors Bureau of American Samoa, David Biafe, will go over the rules and regulations before we proceed. But first, Samoa Mafi, Acting Director, Acting CEO, rather, of the Ministry of Tourism. Thank you, MC. We talk for that work, we'll see. Well, fuck the MC. But before we do, my mom will be more talking about the cut and for one or two. To the Miss Pacific Pageant Board of Directors, the Chairperson, Members, the Chair Lady of SPGO, Board of Directors, Papali Sonia Hunter, reigning Miss Pacific Island contestant, contestant reigning for Miss Pacific Island Pageant Crown 2018-2019, Judges, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Deputy Prime Minister of Tonga, 
it's also the Minister for Tourism and Infrastructure. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to this very important event of the week. A pre pageant interview in the first judging event of the contestant reign for the title of Miss Pacific Island 2018-2019. My very special and warm welcome to the six contestants who will be the center of attention this morning. All the eyes, ears will be on you. In the last few days, you have had the opportunity to get to know each other, and so it is the spirit of sisterhood. I urge you to relax, enjoy the interview. We are all here to support you. The interview this morning is all to, will demonstrate the contestants' knowledge and presentation of solutions to challenges faced by the Pacific region on topics such as education, culture, the environment, health, youth, women, as well as political and economic issues. The United Nations and other organizations have been advocating gender equality in trying to providing women with equal opportunities and rights in social economic development. And I look forward to hearing what our six beautiful ladies have to say about these issues. They are entitled to their own opinion, and they should be able not to be afraid to voice their opinion. Their opinion will help our policy decision makers to improve the standard of living and well-being of the Pacific people, and also those in countries worldwide. For your information, our support to our supporters in the audience, this event used to be a closed door event, but we wanted to provide the opportunity to the public to listen first hand to what these ladies have to say. That is why we allow the media, everyone, to be present. Without any further ado, I invite our supporters to show their appreciation at this event by giving them a round of applause. I wish to remind the audience also to refrain from making comments that may distract our contestant from concentrating on their interview. We must do our best to give them our full support. Contestant, I wish you the very best. Relax and enjoy this. Hello, Pito, on behalf of the Ministry of Tourism, that was the opening remarks from Sir Mar Mafi, the acting CEO. I would like to say that we have board members from the Pacific Islands that are here with us this morning and it's important to recognize them. Of course, the opening prayer was given by one of the members, but I will say, and warm greetings here in the kingdom. Where should I start here with our pageant today? Susumaya Matalamay Aao to the Executive Director. Papali Isonia Hunter, who is the Executive Director for the Miss Pacific Islands Pageant. She's also the Chief Executive Officer of Samoa Tourism Authority, if she wouldn't mind, just so we know exactly who we're recognizing here. I'd also like to mention that we have, um, as our board member from Tuvalu, Elu Tatawa. Talofa El Makoi. We have our board of director member from Papua New Guinea, the lovely Molly O'Rourke. <laughs> we also have our board of director member from the Cook Islands, Kelvana to Clee Masters, who's here with us. So she doesn't feel left out because that's not how we do it in the Friendly Islands. Our prayer was offered by a board of director member from Samoa, Lemalu Lina Palamo. <laughs> our board of director member who is representing our kingdom is Tafo Sa Bloomfield. She's here and ever present. And I'd also like to recognize someone who does a lot of work behind the scenes, the secretary of the Miss Pacific Islands Board which is Christian Scanlon. This is my way of introducing the board member who will also be addressing us at the moment. 
because he will be the one to go over the rules for the first event. And I'd like to call on David Bayafe, who happens also to be not only a board member, but the director of the Visitors Bureau of American Samoa. and Tamaflava to all our contestants, judges, and members of the audience. I'm going to go over the rules, ladies, for one final time, just to make you aware of the rules for today's pre-patient interview. You have five minutes to deliver your topic, your chosen topic. Your topic will be time. So once you come to the podium, I'll be sitting in the second row behind the judges. I will hold up a green folder. So whenever you're ready, you can begin your presentation. Your time starts when you begin your presentation. <coughs> Four minutes, 30 seconds into your presentation, if it is that long, I will hold up an orange folder, advising you that you have 30 seconds left. Okay? And once you reach the five minute mark, I will hold up a red folder. And I will hold up this red folder until you have finished your presentation. Once again, your time is five minutes. For every 10 second period over the five minute mark, you will be deducted one point. So one second to 10 seconds, one point. 11 seconds to 20 seconds, that's another point. And those points, if you go over, will be deducted from your final score. After your presentation, three judges will ask you, each ask you a question each. The order of judges, you look to the judges, it's from the left to right, one to five. So the first contestant, Ms. American Samoa, judge number one, judge number two, judge number three will ask you a question each. For the second contestant, our contestant, to Mr. Lowe, it will be judge number three, judge, sorry, judge number four, judge number five, and then judge number one. And that's how we'll go in the order of judges that will ask you a question based on your presentation. If you can't hear the question the first time, you may ask for it to be repeated. There is no time limit to answering your question. Okay? So be very clear on the rules. Okay, very simple. You've come to this point now, this is it. We wish you all the best. We know you will do well and good luck to you all. Thank you. Before we meet our judges, and actually introduce individual girls as they, our contestants, address us today. It's important to introduce you to the young lady who's the current reigning Miss Pacific Islands, who has no pressure on her whatsoever today, but is probably reminiscing about this very day a year ago when she was preparing to share her thoughts about our region and representing American Samoa, which is her, her home country. I would like to introduce you at this time to the reigning Miss Pacific Islands 2018, Matau Aina Gwendolyn Tokmalatai. If you could give her a round of applause. We'll be very brief in our introductions of the girls because everything they share with you, their thoughts today regarding the platforms and the topics they've been given will tell you a lot about who they are. So I would like to just defer to the judges and introduce you to the five, the panel of five judges who will be with us through the duration of the competition, not only at our first judged event, but three others later on at the Adele Indoor Stadium. I'll start from the very center. Tanaloa Tawa Delsa Atua Moy, Vice President of Cultural Presentations at the Polynesian Cultural Center, which includes all the shows at the Polynesian Cultural Center, the island villages, and tour guide operations. She's also the chairperson for the We Are Samoa Festival, and World Fire Knife Championship, which has been running for 26 years now. Though Hawaii is her home, she is very proud to be from Apia, from Samoa, and I'm proud to say she is my former boss. Please welcome to the Kingdom of God, it's been many years, Tawa Delsa Atua Moi. Also judging today, we have Anna Morris, who is the General Manager for Performance and Cultural Development. Anna Morris was appointed to the role in January 2016. 
is responsible for cultural development, performance improvement, manpower planning, recruitment selection, organization design, and productivity related projects for the Fiji Airways Group. She joined the airline in July 2015 as manager for central procurement and was most recently the general manager central procurement, treasury, aircraft financing, and ownership costs. Ms. Morris Anna, or Anna Morris, holds a bachelor's degree in accounting and international business from Auckland University, as well as a bachelor's degree in international business from a very prestigious university in France that I will learn to pronounce properly. Please welcome her to the Kingdom of Tonga, General Manager, Anna Morris, performance and Performance Development. I might add, because I mentioned Samoa for Delsa, that she's proudly from Fiji. Our next judge, Akosita Habibi Lavu Lavu, is of course of Tongan descent, born in 1985, a member of the Legislative Assembly of Tonga from Mabau 16. She was educated at Tonga High School, Brigham Young University, Hawaii, and the University of the South Pacific. She is the wife of the former MP in Puatula Blavo. And of course, entering parliament, she was the director of the Unwaki Otonga Royal Institute. Ms. Lavlavo was elected, becoming the fifth female MP or member of parliament in Tonga's history. She was re-elected at the most recent 2017 general election. Please welcome our judge, Akosita Habibi Lavlavo. Our next judge is Miss Diana Gertrude Tyson, currently the country manager for National Pacific Insurance, Tonga Limited. Very proud to be from Papua New Guinea. I would also like to say that she's married to a Solomon Islander. How perfect to show the Pacific in one family. <laughs> she's been in the insurance industry for over 10 years and was one of the very first Papua New Guinean women to achieve one of the highest positions in that industry. One of the things that I found very remarkable about the profile I read for her is that she has supported women's football and even played women's football for many years. Please welcome to the Kingdom of Doma for the first time, Ms. Diana Gertrude Tizon, who is as a judge, serving as a judge when she lives in us. Finally, a very familiar face to me, who brings a smile to my face, I might add. Our judge, the final judge, is Paul Corellis, who was the CEO of Air Travel Services for Tonga, former manager of Polynesian Airlines for many years, former cabinet minister here in Tonga, and he's also been an avid farmer who's proven it's very important to work the land, care for the land, and sustain it for generations to come. Paul Corellis. And with that, before the girls come up, because having sat in that kind of seat, might maybe not for Miss Pacific Islands, for the used to be Miss South Pacific, I just want to say that as each girl comes to address us today, you're about to hear the finest in the Pacific. Each of these women will represent their countries well. And with that, we want to remind you that we have Scrutineers will be sure that even though we are taken away with the beauty of these women and the things that they have to say, the scrutineers will be focused at all times. Because these two men happen to have extensive backgrounds in finance, they're only worried about numbers. That's the absolute truth. And so I'd like to introduce you to the scrutineers who will then uh, be sure to take all of the marks and all of the remarks from our judges and put them together so we know who our top uh, contestants are for today. They happen to be the CEO of Waste Management, um, Malakai Lomusika. If you could please stand. And sitting next to him is also um, the CEO, oh, Deputy CEO. He's already like touching his brow because he knows that I should just cut to the chase and tell you that with his 20 years in finance, we've selected none other than Michael Bloomfield to be our scrutineer as well. 
With that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to introduce our contestants in the order that they will be appearing for all of our events. And I'd like to introduce first the young lady who is representing Miss American Samoa. Please welcome at this time, Malita Johnson. Politics affect every part of our daily lives, including but not limited to education, health care, culture, gender equality, and even family life. However, because of the broadness of the subject, I'm going to focus only on two main points, upholding God in government and empowering women to become leaders. In our Pacific Islands, we have many forms of government. Tonga is the only remaining island kingdom, a monarchy form of government. Samoa was the first Pacific Island country to fight for and obtain independence from New Zealand. Hawaii is the only Pacific Island nation to become a full-fledged state outside of North America and the continental U.S. American Samoa is the only U.S. territory in the South Pacific region under the umbrella of the United States of America and guided by the Samoan traditional culture. Each of these Pacific Island countries reflects a diverse form of government. However, no matter the differences in our island political systems, there is one thing that we have held in common for many years. That is that we are guided by our Heavenly Father, even in our political affairs. That is the reason that our Pacific Islands have had peace for so many years. Something that sets us apart from the rest of the world. God is in every part of our culture. In many parts of the world, we have begun to see how even the mention of God's name has become banned because of politics. Even in our Pacific Islands, we see the influence of outside politics in how we are becoming more and more westernized. We must take a stand to solidify and hold on to this most important aspect of our island governments before it also fades away. In our governments, policies need to be introduced to uphold this part of our values, our culture, and our rights. As an ambassador, I would become an advocate to our political leaders in appealing to this matter. Secondly, I want to address the fact that our Pacific Island women are very underrepresented. In my own country of American Samoa, we have one woman in the Senate and two women in the House of Representatives. The point I'm trying to make is not that we must always have women leaders, because we do not want to choose our leaders based on something as inevitable as gender. And it is not that I am saying that women are always better than men, but we should be given more opportunities to prove ourselves. Because the question we should be asking is, who has what it takes to step into the role and do what needs to be done? And the point that I want to make today is that we women do have what it takes. Our Pacific Island women have the potential and the same capabilities to step into the role and perform as well as anyone else. Or as we say in Psalm 1, Eau leina ilau at samaitai. Thank you, malo apito. This is when we turn the time over to the judges for any questions they have for Miss American Samoa, Manalita Ilomena Johnson.
Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Miss America. Um, apart from changing the Pacific approach in terms of introducing GAP, what would be one policy change that you would like to see introduced in the Parliament of the Pacific that would empower them? A policy that could be introduced into our Pacific Island political systems to further empower women. Well, first of all, we need to educate our women on the programs that are out there that are available to them so that they can become leaders. Our women have so much potential. They just need to be able to tap into that potential. And there are many programs that are currently available. So I think that we need to educate our women, introduce a policy that educates all, all girls starting from at least high school about the different programs that are available to help them with things such as public speaking or presenting themselves. Thank you. You mentioned that um, we're becoming more westernized and we need to take a stand against this. Given that we have everybody worldwide watching you now, what would you recommend that we could do as Pacific Islanders to prevent um, the westernization um, happening at, such, at the rate that you're uh, describing? Thank you. In my own country of American Samoa, I have seen many ways in which we are becoming westernized. When I visit Western Samoa, I see a great difference in the culture, especially in our kids, right? So I suggest that we implement programs to teach the kids the culture so that they will hold on to it and not lose it simply because they are overwhelmed by media by the things that we have today that take over our everyday lives. It's important to remember who we are and where we come from. Thank you. Talofa Mangalita. As an aspiring marriage and family counselor, what laws would you like to see changed or enacted that would better strengthen families? Thank you. As an aspiring marriage and family counselor, I think it is important that women learn their roles as wives and mothers. It is just as important as being a leader because it is being a leader in your own family. Women, many women today, do not understand exactly what it means to be a mother or a wife. And that is part of why we have our divorce rates are rising so fast many girls step into marriage not knowing what they're getting into. I think it would be wise to educate all women as they are about to get married about things that, that they need to know, to expect. You know, these things are expected um, from our, our mothers and our grandmothers, but not every woman has a role model <coughs> woman to look to. So if this is something that our society can provide, and I'm sure that it would improve society overall. Thank you. Those were the questions from our judges. We'd like to thank them, but especially thank Miss American Samoa for starting this off very well this morning. Next contestant to join us on stage will be Miss Tuvalu, Emily Pelesa San Panapa. Please welcome her. Begging us to preserve and to conserve 
their populations for the sake of our future generations. My topic for today is environment. Environment is one of those words that is similar to mirage, which you can clearly see it from a distance, but as you get closer, it fades away. This means that environment is a very broad and complex physical component of this life. The environment not only refers to the natural ecosystem and its biodiversity, but it also refers to the atmosphere, the ocean, and especially to us humans on how we react towards the living and non-living things in our surroundings. The environment is our home and identity that plays an important aspect in our lives. It defines the way we live and how we enrich the values of our culture by the environment we are living in. It bonds and connected our spiritual and physical beings with the beauty of the land. The environment is our land, our vinegar, our source of life. I basically see or view environment as life. Without the environment, there is no life. This is because we cannot live independently without the environment. Over the years, we Pacific Islanders have been depending on our environment as our source of survival. Unfortunately, our environment has been seriously affected and sadly, we human beings are responsible for it. Our unsustainable attitudes, actions, and process would cripple the environment, overpopulation, overcrowding, urbanization, deforestation, economic development and other process cause global warming, acidification and most importantly climate change. And all of these damage our environment and of course our life. If you agree with me that environment is life, we need to strongly emphasize this to our Pacific people. This should be the first thing that our school children learn and understand about environment. All Pacific people should genuinely convince that we simply interact with the environment because we seek for life. Environment is life or life is environment. I am honored to know that the people and the government of Tonga has launched a no plastic campaign this week and also for um, the cleaning competition amongst the villages. for standing tall to protect our magnificent Pacifica. Before I finish off, I call upon our Pacific people, our Pacific warriors, to stand together, unite as one, hold hands together, to protect and fight for our, for our environment, to obtain, to nurture our Mother Earth, and to obtain our magnificent Pacifica. Emily, as a teacher, and being one who's interested in retaining the pristine environment of your country, what crops or trees or plants would you advise people to grow? <clears throat> Why would you grow them, and how would you grow them? How would you teach them to be grown? Thank you very much for the question. As a teacher, I will teach the kids to plant mangrove trees. Why? Because mangrove trees, trees um, help to conserve and maintain our soil from soil erosion and also it protects our small living things like our small creatures, fish and also mangrove trees in my country we use it to make our traditional attires from the barks of the, of the, the tree, the leaves yeah, thank you very much. So mango cheese yeah. is the best cheese to plant. <laughs> yeah. Emily Malawa, good for your um, presentation. Um, my question is, um, throughout the whole Pacific, how can we come together, or what do you think we should do? Come together to emphasize environment amongst our Pacific people. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, to come together, since we are all impacted by climate change, for a miss, if I had the chance to talk with our Pacific leaders, I would definitely do. Talk together with them, and then we'll go to in industrialized nations or international countries to liaise with them and to share and to tell them 
the impacts that we are facing at the moment to our environment, and for them to um, to you know reduce uh, the mitigation of um, to reduce gas emissions that are industrialized nations um, produce per year, and for that to come up with sustainable ways to help us to look at us because we want to survive as well, right? <laughs> So that is why um, to come together, I will definitely go and sit and ask, um, talk with our Pacific leaders, let's all go to international um, countries, industrialized nations, and talk with them how we are impacting right now, because, you know, our climate change is advocate for climate change and with development and urbanization that the speak needs to go through in terms of moving forward, what would be the one thing that the Pacific needs to be having the back of the mind whilst we're going through the changes? Okay, thank you for that question. Many, we Pacific people need to think about the sake of our future generations. They need to see and witness and experience what resources we have had now. So to consider the fact that we are impacted by climate change, so us Pacific people, we need to stand together, fight, and advocate for um, climate change that is impacting our environment, stand up together and preserve, conserve, and um, keep our resources, and maintain our resources for the sake of our future generations. So the most important thing is think of our future generations. Thank you very much. In preparation for our next contestant who has a PowerPoint to help uh, to aid in her presentation. We'll let her set that up. And take just a few moments to thank some of our Gold Elite sponsors who are here with us in this very room of the National Reserve Bank. We cannot do much of what we do, not only in the Ministry of Tourism, but in our efforts to support and host Miss Pacific Islands without the continual support and contributions of our Gold Elite sponsors, such as Fiji Airways, whose general manager is here with us and CEO. Thank you so much, Navi Maka. Tonga Power Limited, TCC, which is 100% Tongan owned. And of course, uh, Matama Tonga, the government of Tonga support as well. And Kava Queen, that it happens to be an individual entrepreneur who has contributed as one of our Gold Elite sponsors. Thank you so much to Shirley Alosi Mahina for being one of our Gold Elite sponsors. I know that I can speak for everyone in this room that we're off to such a good start. The Pacific is magnificent because we have some amazing women to lead in the Pacific right here in this room. We'll be addressed at this time for the judges, in the interest of the judges. Our third contestant for Miss Pacific Islands, who happens to be from the Cook Islands, Lydia Simone Tariu. She will address us as soon as we have her PowerPoint ready just so I don't break her concentration and we give the judges an opportunity to deliberate. And of course, our scrutineers who are very, very busy and concentrating, I'll go ahead and just take my seat and wait for her to address us when that time comes.
ladies and gentlemen, Miss Cook Islands is Lydia Simone Sabiu. We only have one PowerPoint presentation, so when we do get it up and running, it will be well worth the wait. <laughs> yes, what we need for you, from you is Pacific Island smiles. <laughs> There's nothing more disconcerting than to be standing up here under hot lights and to see your foreheads looking at your phones so we can have you look up. Give us a smile, fill the air with the kind of uh, Pacific warmth that I'm feeling right now. And since uh, the PowerPoint presentation is about to come on, I have great faith it will do that. I was able to locate the rest of our sponsors that have been part of this pageant, but not just the Pacific Islands. They've always supported our local pageant here in the kingdom. And so we'd like to thank our platinum sponsors, Mishi Trading Limited, Spare Parts Zone, Bottle Aviation Services, Boma Water and Office Equipment, Digicel, Polynesian Cultural Center, Five Star Finance, Toma Broadcom 87.5 FM. Our gold sponsors, maybe I should mention, platinum sponsors have contributed up to 5,000 Ba'ana. Gold sponsors, on the other hand, contributing up to 3,000 Ba'ana. And by the way, the reason we tell how much you've given is we hope that every year you give a little bit more. <laughs> yes, you move from the platinum to the elite sponsor. For those of you watching in the cameras, you can be an elite sponsor next year. Just a few more thousands as you contribute to our efforts. As you can see and hear, it's very much worth it. It is. Our gold sponsors, Port Authority, Dolfa Ramsey Shipping, Chinese Embassy, the Kingdom's Coslo, Fexco, and Leata, who is our local designer in Mukwalofa. Our silver sponsors, Boy, you silver sponsors are lucky, because usually we wouldn't reach you at this time, but the, the system, and we're not uh, ready for the screen. So, goals, we want to say thank you so much. Mahalo lahi. Mahalo alpito. Silver sponsors who have given up to a thousand ba'ana. We really appreciate everyone on this list. Honorable Fafanua and Crystal Kite. Sunshine Rentals. Paula Moy Moy Live Stream. Paula Moy Moy Natu sitting right here. Thank you for going live stream for everyone that's tuning in from around the Pacific. Toma Airport Limited, CCECC. Maybe someone can tell me what that is, I've been gone too long. Ahamano Quarries, Liku Alofa Beach Resort, Life Apparel and Signage, A Toma Forest Products, Malo Apito to BSP Bank, Toma Post and Fast Print. Couldn't do this without the support of Sea Kaiola, Waterfront, Siamana Travel, Waste Authority Limited, Little Italy, Scenic Hotel, Little India, Home Gas Limited, Simply the Best Custom Broker, Cowley and Sons, Yummy Treats, 
OG Sand and Sands Limited, Island Dredging Company, BB Constructing Limited. Thank you to all of our sponsors, from our silver sponsors, gold sponsors, and platinum sponsors. And we look forward to you joining the ranks of the elite sponsors, such as BG Airways, Tonga Power Limited, Tano Hotel, TCC, MBF Bank, Matematonga, and Kawa Queen. Thank you to that one person who clapped so everyone else could do the same. You know, in all of our islands, perhaps something we have in common is that our greatest, for, Tong, for Tonga we say, to say thank you is a very important part of being Tongan because without gratitude or ingratitude, we would not truly be who we are. And so I just wanted to mention that with that round of applause is our gratitude for all of our sponsors. Now at tonight's event, there'll be an opportunity to also mention them. And we also look forward to seeing some of their advertisements. You won't have to hear my, my voice always. Looks like they're good to go. working with us to get this up on the screen and to remind the judges and all who are in this room that we've got something projected close to you. Good morning. My project is on education in Pacific Islands. Um, so I've created a draft strategic plan. I, have, I acknowledge the information and data which I've used from the United Nations report on the Pacific Islands 2015 and also my own personal experience traveling to multiple islands around the Pacific and analyzing the youth and the school systems they have over there. Please note I have left draft of my presentation because this is such a fundamentally important topic to the Pacific Islands and I would not even attempt to present a final presentation without much more input and consultation from others. Our strong beliefs in family values need to drive improvement of our educational systems. What we do to improve our education and encourage engagement will increase employment. Pacific Islands education systems. Generations of healthy young Pacific Islanders, in order to continue to live to their full potential, need to prioritize development of educational systems. Educational, education strategic goals that we need to actively drive. One, Pacific Islands and cultures. Two, education content delivery, ongoing content development, funding from governments, and driving engagement. Empowering, inclusive, optimistic, balanced, and forward thinking. Five strategic goals will drive the creation of development of more advanced education systems in the Pacific Islands. That would be adoption of unified education goals by Pacific Islands, development of content delivery, ongoing educational content development, Pacific Islands government and international funding, and community engagement on the importance of education. So as I have limited time, I'm only going to go through the objectives of my goals, and it's up to you. I will allow you to read through the strategies in your own time. So Pacific Islands education, people, and culture. Objective one. By 2025, our respectful and supportive cultures will engage and motivate our people with a, pa with a passion to improve and achieve universal primary and secondary education. Improve our data collection and record keeping of our youth to drive education participants and improve our education system. 
The Pacific Islands will adopt an educational entrepreneurial mindset we will embrace, encourage and promote education, creativity and inclusive behaviour. The Pacific Islands will distinguish themselves within a dedicated focus on gender equality and focus on youth with disabilities and their education to and their access to education. So in addition, I find that these are the most these are a specialty um, these are specialty topics as well to develop a separated feder uh, separate federated educational body to focus on health education and to develop a separated federated education body to focus on sex education. Alcohol and drug use need to be better addressed through education systems which provide awareness and learnings to youth prior to their exposure to these elements and provide them with a basic understanding to other serious roots of these issues in their lives. As you know, we, uh, in the past few years, there's beginning to be a growing problem with drug issues in the Pacific Islands. The, the development of a federated health approach that youth are encouraged to adopt and practice practice, um, a contemporary educational approach to sex education to drive educators' life decisions, which will support gender equality. We also have a high rate of young teen pregnancies as well. So instead of uh, taking care of a child at a young age, if we can support more educated life decisions, hopefully we, we will have more younger women in the workforce. Our education systems are uniquely placed to reach a large and ever-growing proportion of young people during their formative years. It's our duty to ensure that they have the knowledge, attitudes, understandings and skills they need to protect health through their lives. Okay, Pacific Islands Development of Content Delivery. Objective. By 2025, our educational content will be accessible by all Pacific Islanders and drive education for all of youth. We must leave a positive and lasting impression on young people. We must be able to provide evidence of our effectiveness in supporting young people to make safer and healthier choices. Um, and Pacific Islands, next topic, Pacific Islands content development objective. By 2025, Pacific Islands will be recognized by students, teachers and parents as well as international communities for the relevance and quality of our content, which is fresh, contemporary, highly engaging and accessible on multiple platforms. We should seek to regularly update and upgrade our content in a timely manner in response to school community needs. Our available content is made, from, is made available to our educators in the form that enables them to arrange it best that meets their class preferences. Number three, Pacific Islands government and international community. By 2025, we should aim to be realizing income generating potentials of our educational system through a more entrepreneurial business minded approach. Number one, in addition, grow a group of international stakeholders to make a long-term commitment to our education. Build a federated Pacific Islands government federated plan. Number three, establish a Pacific Islands Education Foundation Trust Plan. Community engagement. By 2025, Pacific Islands will be recognized by the public as one of the world's leading educational systems and highly valued by all stakeholders for the quality of our people and our values. The Pacific Islands will empower young people to make safer and healthier choices. Malo Afito. So the reason why I've come up with this draft was because when I read the United Nations report, it was a 100-page report, and based on the statistics, our young Pacific people, there was an inconsistency with employment rates, with our educational system, meaning some people don't graduate or even finish high school or even primary school, and we had a problem with our content. The reason why I brought up the content delivery was because um, we're not, uh, content isn't properly um, recorded. And that has, been, uh, that has been like that for a few years now, for a very long time actually. So thank you everyone for listening to my presentation and I hope that you will gain some great insight to education. We like Olivia, thank you for your presentation. Um, would you be able to, you mentioned content and delivery um, specifically. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to tell me a little bit about that. There was a lot of information, there was you know, a lot for us to get through. Tell me, what do you think is missing from the content and delivery? 
and what would you like to include and why? Well, I find that our government and our systems need to acknowledge what the young people are doing and find what their behaviors actually are, what their everyday, what they do every single day, and what they are doing every day. They're on their mobile phones, they're constantly using technology. If we give more contemporary content, insights, we use apps, we're on proper social media sites, that will hopefully engage young people in a better way because it relates to them. We're growing up in a Gen Z generation now, and we speak about preserving the culture, preserving who we are as Pacific Islanders. The only way we can do that is if we move forward with what's happening in the world. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lydia, for a very passionate presentation. I'd like to ask, what have you done personally to promote education amongst the youth? Well, one of my first things I did as a reigning Miss Cook Islands was visit the outer islands and supply the young students at, for example, Api Genuamana, which is my island, with new school supplies, art supplies. So, <coughs> 120, 170 students with my own funding and my own, um, how would I say, um, what do you call it, like, um, foundation sort of. Um, I actually managed to get a Pacific people on board to donate a pen or a pencil or a packet of pencils or so every single child I gave them a ruler, a geometry set, packet of colored pencils, packet of textures, packet of black pens, red pens, blue pens, pencil cases, art supplies and that was for 170 kids and um, if we actually did get the presentation back up, all the pictures I have. Can we possibly get my presentation back up? And can we possibly go to slide number one? Oh, so stop, stop there for a second. So over here is when we travelled to Archu, a small island with multiple cases filled with supplies. And we get into all the students because, as you know, the outer island, uh, children on the outer island are almost forgotten and are a bit underprivileged that some children will just come into school with one pen. So how can our young people actually evolve if they are limited in their resources? And, excuse me. <sighs> so, um... We have high rates of young women getting pregnant at young ages and raising babies at 15 years old. So my sister and I, as my duty, I went with my own initiative to give proper talks on sexual health and proper relationships. And also we spoke about goal setting and how we can push forward in life because I find that our young Pacific people don't have anyone to talk to. And to go back onto the sexual health talk we have, we let them know the options that they had in case they needed contraceptives and you know proper counselling, etc. And also we did um, group talks with students about their health and fitness. Well, which is something important that they can hold throughout their whole lives. Lydia, thank you very much for your emotional presentation. Much appreciated. A lot of emphasis has been focused on the content, but at its very simplest, education is from the word educare, which means to draw out, to bring out ability and potentials. What ways do you think you could use to bring out the abilities and potentials of the people that you work with? Well, I feel like here in the Pacific Islands we we maintain a respectful relationship with our elders and our teachers and our parents and unfortunately there's we lack the level a level minded counselling 
person that is able to relate to our young people so they can actually feel like they're not dumb, feel like they're not stupid, feel like they're not put down for asking questions and for being, um, for trying to gain a better knowledge of these things. So I feel like um, for myself to be able to relate as a young person to younger people and I've gone through hardships myself, we all have, um, to, make, to make them feel like they're not alone and to be questionable and to ask about things, to ask about life. It, there's nothing wrong with that and there's no mistakes. When you're young, you can only improve, learn and keep pushing forward. So I think with the content, what you mentioned, as I said, with technology, if we move with the times with what, with what our young people are doing, um, I think that's a way we can exhume better potential and more of them because they feel comfortable to actually open up. Because a lot of our young Pacific people, they're very enclosed. As you know, we have a high, we also have, um, unfortunately, a high suicide rate as well. And maybe that's from bottling so many emotions in that they're unable to bring out. So I think that's important that you know, if we get onto their level, if we make them feel like we cater after the youth, then maybe we will get that potential that we look for. Thank you. Thank you, Maata. Ms. Kuki Ayrani. Ms. Kansas Lydia. Simonis. Salim. We're at the halfway point with our contestants. And for those of you tuning in from around the world on live stream, we've actually, most of us, have been tearing up since the beginning. From all three presentations, we have felt the passion of each woman as they've come forward and taken on um, really important topics of discussion. And with that, we dry our eyes a little bit and we sit a little taller. I'm checking on the scrutineers and the judges and we are ready to proceed with the last half of this the first judged event of the Miss Pacific Islands 2018. And with that